What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. So with all ups and downs, Battlefield 2042 is coming to an end and that means that DICE and all the other studios working on the next Battlefield game need to hear what the community actually wants. I specifically made this video because I truly believe that the next Battlefield game, Battlefield 6, whatever you want to call it, will be the franchise's final stand. If they mess that up, it's going to be a death sentence for Battlefield franchise. That is something I believe deep inside, especially in the recent years, seeing how DICE treated a game like Battlefield 2042. I know for a fact that if the next Battlefield game starts awfully, it's going to just die like Battlefield 2042 died, but this time it will bring the whole franchise down, or at least what's left of it. So I'm really putting all the love into making this video. If you have other points, make damn sure to comment down below. Apparently Battlefield developers are listening to fans now, or at least that's what they say. So hope you can have some positive impact on the next Battlefield game. Also liking this video will help it reach out to more people and hopefully to the right people. So do me a favor and make sure you do that as well. With all that said, it's time to get started. So we have 11 points here that we're going to go over one by one and they're almost equally important when it comes to core Battlefield experience. So number 11, the familiar class system with no specialist. Like it or not, Battlefield 2042 brought specialists on board, which might serve well for financial purposes, which is exactly what EA wants with every single one of their games. But when it comes to what Battlefield truly is, no specialist with special abilities has a place. And I mean it when I say it. Some people call 2042 a hero shooter. I wouldn't agree on that, but I can absolutely see where those people are coming from. Creepy voice lines, cringe most of the times, and special abilities that are defying Battlefield 2042. If you put, let's say, Sundance in any other Battlefield game, she's going to ruin that game. The same goes for almost all the specialists. They have absolutely no place outside of Battlefield 2042, and that's why 2042 was and is such a failure. Just remember how badass and I would say masculine things were in Battlefield 3 or 4 without ever involving any special character. So I believe specialists should die in 2042. It was a new experience, hardly a good one, and it has to end here. We need to go back to the roots of Battlefield, bring the classes back with each class having their own abilities, and that would be a starting point for making Battlefield great again. Number 10, a complete set of vehicles. Now let me explain. If you take someone straight from Battlefield 3 or 4 and introduce 2042 to them, the first thing that they would say after what the hell is this piece of shit is where are the naval vehicles? Where are the close air support planes like A-10 or Sukhoi-25? Why is there no goddamn water anywhere on these maps? And I can go with the same type of questions for an entire day. The truth is, a very important aspect of the game like Battlefield 4 for instance, was naval vehicles and the interaction between naval, ground, and air vehicles at the same time. For some reason, that is not the case anymore. Some say it's a game engine limitation, and I completely disagree. Some others say they didn't have enough time, which makes more sense since they didn't even have enough time to make a scoreboard for the game in the early days. And some say they just were lazy and kind of distracted by all the specialist crap. Whatever the reason was, if the next Battlefield game is going to be a love letter to the fans, while the fans are clear with their needs. Also, it's vital to have some balance between all the vehicles, since it's something the Battlefield 2042 lacks. The entire 2042 vehicle balance can be called air superiority. An attack helicopter can absolutely devour a tank, and tanks are literally defenseless against them. Not only tanks, but this is legit for every other ground vehicle. This has to be fixed. Actually, the entire vehicle balance needs to be overhauled so that we don't see a tragedy like 2042 vehicles again. Also, if you are a pilot or a vehicle player in general, you can comment down below and let me know your ways around this unbalanced situation or your fixes for the next Battlefield game. Next up, number 9, we need a solid progression system. So one of the few things that I really like about Battlefield 2042 is having weapon and vehicle masteries. It kind of gives you a purpose to play every single weapon and have different playstyles. From grinding for getting a T1 mastery for all the weapons to grinding for vehicles, I believe it's a good aspect of progression in the game. However, I believe it is immature in Battlefield 2042 because it all ends with T1 masteries and nothing more. Back in the days of Battlefield 4, we had dog tags. You can call it a better and more realistic form of player cards in 2042. Now, some of these dog tags are extremely hard to unlock and therefore, it was extremely rare to come by a player having them. That would give you something to grind for, something more than just winning and getting kills, and some of you might understand my point of view, especially if you've been around for quite some time and got bored having literally nothing to do. In Battlefield 4, getting those dog tags and completing the in-game missions, I don't really remember what the names were and what they were called, those things could keep you entertained for years. Even I don't have some of them unlocked on my account. So that means you always have something to grind for and that is very important in games like Battlefield where you don't have a ranking system, 
the game is not competitive, and you need side hustles to keep you going. 2042 absolutely lacks that, even though it's a live service game. And Easter eggs. Battlefield is known for secret dog tags and secret weapon skins and all that. Again, Battlefield 4 was absolutely rich in that department, unlike 2042. Long story short, to have players entertained and happy playing the game, you always need them to have a goal. The goal in a non-competitive game like Battlefield should be getting those rare dog tags, mastering those weapons and vehicles, and grinding for the easter eggs. That's what Battlefield players are used to do. Number 8. Server browser is a must. So with 2042 having a matchmaking system throughout the years, this system proved to have its own pros and cons, but I guess we all agree on the fact that the negative side has been stronger. You guys have probably experienced bot lobbies, but if you're not familiar with the term, Battlefield 2042 has bots to basically fill the gap of players, and sometimes when you match make, you find yourself in a bot lobby where more than 60% of the players are actually bots. This whole bot thing is still a part of Battlefield 2042 because the matchmaking system could never become a practical tool. It has received so many patches, and although it's really better now, it still needs a lot of work to do to become the perfect system. Now the simple fix to all this was having an actual server browser, just like every other Battlefield game, but DICE was so stubborn on this specific subject that it has weaved it into the game, leaving no other choice but to improve a lost cause. The only issue with the server browser and the only place where a matchmaking system can really be better is sifting players by region. Now let me explain. A matchmaking system will not let anyone from the US, let's say, join the Europe server. They need a VPN for that, which is just complicated for a lot of people and it's a waste of time. Now this might not sound important at first, but when a player joins a server outside their own region, their latency will be higher, resulting in the average server latency to increase as well, which will cause some hit rec issues and some server-side problems. Some even say that 2042's hit rec issues are connected to VPN users plaguing the servers. I believe with a server browser this will be really easier, you don't even need a VPN to do that, and this plague will reach even more players. However, everything comes at a cost, and apparently that's the cost of having a server browser in a Battlefield game. Next up at number 7, we've got realistic movement. I have friends who play 2042 and Battlefield 4 at the same time, and whenever they switch, 2042's fast-paced movement hurts them the most. Honestly, when you get used to something in a game, especially in an FPS game, and when that muscle memory starts to form, it's hard to realize some issues because, after all, you got used to it. Because of that, when someone plays 2042 on a regular basis, someone like me, I might find Battlefield 4's gameplay slow, but regardless of what my muscle memory is craving, I need to be honest when it comes to the future of this franchise. 2042's gameplay is just too fast, ladies and gentlemen, and this all happened with 2042 and DICE trying to reach out to a fan base that wasn't theirs. This was a fatal mistake for 2042, and we all are seeing the results every day. Not only they couldn't catch the eye of Call of Duty players, but they also lost a big portion of their fan base as well. Battlefield 5 has a fast gameplay as well, but it's not comparable with 2042's. In my opinion, having a gameplay as fast as Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 4 is the way to go, because Battlefield has never been about jumping and sliding around, and this is a broken mindset that DICE has or had once upon a time. Some people like sliding, but the perfect movement, in my opinion, will have no place for sliding and jumping like a rabbit. I just hope they've learned their lessons, and don't repeat this mistake again, because the price would be much higher this time. Number 6. Having realistic destruction and levolution events. When it's about good memories, Battlefield 4 is always where my mind goes back to. Siege of Shanghai, that collapse of the building, the storm and Operation Whiteout, the Flood and Flood Zone, and many more. These levolution events opened up some new opportunities in the game, changing the gameplay mechanics and turning one objective into a completely different environment. Even thinking about those days gives me goosebumps, because nowadays, we don't have those kind of things anymore. What's interesting is, having Levolution events and a realistic destruction system are tied together and they can't exist independently. Battlefield 4 was a great game in terms of destruction back in the days of 2013, and it had some awesome Levolution events as well. Unfortunately, as the years have passed, destruction and Levolution have faded as two core elements of Battlefield. DICE has started to hire people for in-game realistic destruction a few months ago, and we know that they are planning to put that aspect back in the next Battlefield game. However, how they deliver is what matters. I believe at least for Levolution events, they have to look back at Battlefield 4 as a work of art. What I can say now is Levolution events and destruction are two things the fans absolutely want, and having them in the next Battlefield game seems like a must to me. A story-based single-player campaign is going to be number 5. Now, we know for a fact that the next Battlefield game will have a campaign for sure, and that is confirmed by DICE. Ridgeline Games was the studio responsible and in charge of making that single player campaign, 
but due to discrepancies between EA and Marcus Leto, the head of Ridgeline Games, they've been laid off entirely and now Criterion Games will lead the development of the campaign alongside a part of Motive Studio. This part of the video is not actually for DICE nor EA and I wanted this to reach out to Battlefield players who think Battlefield doesn't need a single player campaign. Some of you think that it's a waste of resources but 2042 has no campaign without any resources wasted on that. Where did that lead us? In my opinion, it's a poor argument to claim that a single player campaign would waste time and energy when some of the best Battlefield titles in the history of the franchise have the best campaigns in the history of franchise as well. Battlefield 3 was a brilliant game with a brilliant story. The same goes for Battlefield Bad Company 2. Even Battlefield 1 had a nice campaign, but unfortunately, over the past few years, the single player campaign of Battlefield games has shifted towards being a shooting range for multiplayer and I absolutely hate that. Battlefield stories used to be unique and develop deep connections with the player and kind of complementing the multiplayer section. I believe most of the people who claim that Battlefield needs no story campaign are the newbies to the franchise, with all due respect, because a veteran Battlefield player or at least a more experienced fan would understand the importance of this aspect to create a bond between the player and the game. So, a story-rich single-player campaign is what I think is a must for the next title. Not just a training ground, but an actual story to tell. Number 4. A working and solid stat system. I just cannot point it out enough, no matter how many minutes I talk about this. This topic is a coin with two sides. One side is the average player who gets bombarded with tons of attachments, and if the stats are not clear enough, just like Battlefield 2042, they get confused because they don't literally know what to use on each weapon. The other side of this coin is the content creator community, which will have a harder time with a broken stat system since they need to explain attachments and usually choose the best ones between them. People want us to be accurate with what we say, but the in-game stats not only will not help us, but will make things even more complicated. There are so many aspects of the current stats that needs an entire overhaul. For instance, we have an ADS accuracy and a hipfire accuracy being two completely different things in Battlefield 2042. The stat system, however, somehow mixes these two into accuracy without any further explanations. So this leaves us with no rational choice but to have two different bars for each ADS and hipfire accuracy. That's like nothing complicated, but for some reason DICE is avoiding it. Or let's talk about firepower. Nobody knows what that represents in Battlefield 2042. We know for sure that it's not about damage, but damage only plays a role. Apparently reload speed and fire rates somehow play a role as well, but as I said, nobody knows for sure. Stability on the other hand has to represent how high or low the recoil is, right? Wrong. It doesn't. Recoil is just a part of it. You see how complicated that is? The stats are just useless because they are just numbers and you have to interpret them yourself as a player. A developed stat system with damage muzzle velocity, ADS accuracy, hip fire accuracy, recoil, mobility, and many more statistics is needed for the next game so we can end this confusion drama around the stats once and for all. Next point here, number three, is improved map design. Now what I mean by that is specifically focusing on designing maps for Conquest 64. You guys might know how 128 player game modes destroyed the fundamentals of map design for Battlefield 2042, but if you don't know, 2042 was marketed for providing intense 128 player game modes and for fitting that amount of players in a map, there is nothing you can do but making maps bigger. Now this automatically means those maps will have more open spaces aka wasted spaces that have little to no use in smaller population game modes like Rush or even Conquest 64. So in 2042 we've got maps with hundreds of meters of empty space that kind of feel too big for any game mode with 64 players or less. Apart from that, being able to process all that data from 128 players was proven to be harder than expected and actually causes hit reg issues and latency issues in the game. I believe DICE actually learned a lesson here seeing all this because their last four maps for the game are completely designed for 64 players. Redacted, Reclaimed, Haven and the new stadium are all way smaller than the base game maps. Hourglass or Exposure are just huge when compared to the last maps, so clearly a lesson is learned. I've heard this 128 player thing was tested back in the days of developing Battlefield 4, and the old DICE team came to a conclusion that 128 players just doesn't work for Battlefield, and the case was closed. So, based on all that, repeating this mistake would be lethal, and I truly encourage DICE and the other studios to not waste time on a bigger scale Battlefield for the sake of the franchise, and go back to 64 player format. That way, the maps are going to be more practical and they would feel like the good old maps that we all have memories from. Number two, more weapons, more maps. It's no secret that Battlefield 2042 has the least amount of maps between the last three to four Battlefield games, 
Based on this picture, which is really a good one, Battlefield 1 had 9 maps at launch and 20 maps post-launch, making a total of 29 maps. For Battlefield 5, we had 9 maps at launch and 11 post-launch maps, making a total of 20 maps. And for Battlefield 2042, we got 7 maps at launch, 7 maps post-launch, and 6 maps for Portal. Now, taking Portal maps out of the equation, 2042 right now has 15 maps because Stadium is now a standalone map, and that is literally half of Battlefield 1's maps. That's just crazy how Battlefield has been downgraded in just 5 years, from 29 maps to only 15. Not to mention Battlefield 4 had like 31 or 32 maps. Crazy diversity, man. And that's not all, because the weapons are even worse. This picture right here is a little bit outdated, and I really couldn't find anything better, but Battlefield 1 has 77 weapons, Battlefield 5 has 82 weapons, and Battlefield 2042 had only 22 weapons by the time this picture was made. Let's say right now it has 35 all-out warfare weapons, meaning we're not counting portal weapons. That again, less than half of the weapons of Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5. All of this leads us to one place, DICE being the worst they've ever been. This has to change for the next game, like this is a must. I know people who literally quit playing the game because of repetitive maps, and that's not something to overlook. Pretty sure one of the reasons why Battlefield 1 came out to be so successful was because of beautiful and well thought about maps that it's got. So DICE has to hire up their game in both map and weapon diversity. Oh, and I was about to forget, Battlefield 4 had over 100 weapons with all the DLCs. Pause the video for a second and think about that number again. Last but not least, number 1 optimization and netcode issues. This one might sound a little bit less important for people who just don't care about their performance or have like high-end PCs, but the average player and some creators like myself don't have the most powerful PCs on the planet Earth. Battlefield has always been known as a CPU-bound or CPU-heavy game, and that has become a stereotype between the fans. I'm not gonna exaggerate if I say that DICE has taken advantage of this. If it uses the CPU like crazy, then do something about it. There are optimization teams working for other AAA studios, and they often do a pretty decent job. The fact that DICE has a it is what it is mentality about the game's performance issues kind of enrages me because this whole CPU thing being accepted by everyone is like an excuse for them. My friends and I sometimes make jokes about it, and we're like, the game's gonna keep running if I completely take my GPU out of the PC. That's how CPU dependent it is. Netcode is another hot topic for every single Battlefield game. I remember Battlefield 4 fans always complaining, Battlefield 1 fans started complaining, and this broken cycle has found its way to 2042 as well. Most of the hit rate issues we're facing in 2042 are because of poor netcoding. Not all of it, but definitely most of it. All of this has to stop somewhere. Yes, it needs more time and effort, more resources, and more money, but guess what? You'll have more people with mediocre PCs playing your game instead of being stuck in the old games just because their PCs can't handle the non-optimized crap. It was something I had to mention as a part of the PC community and I believe it needs a lot more attention. With all that said, today's video comes to an end. I've researched for all the points made in this video to be able to cover the majority of what the community wants, but then again, one person can only get so far. If you think there's anything to add to this video, the comment section is your place to go and let me know what I've missed, so don't forget to share your opinion. Thanks for watching and hope this will all come in handy for those who are behind the development of the next Battlefield game, a game that will determine the destiny of Battlefield franchise. Until next time guys, stay cool.